I'm on 247 meters on the median wave and always glad of your company. Did you write the book of love and do you have faith in God above? This is the story of 10 years in the life of a castle. A landmark on the motorway linking north and south, the M6, but a landmark that no one ever really noticed. It's about two archaeologists, Phil Barker and Charles Hill, and how they and the people of a small Midlands town, mostly youngsters, embarked on a search into their past. It's about what they found and how they found it. Their objective was to uncover one of the largest unexplored sites of medieval England. A site forgotten even by the town that gave it its name. The first point which is extraordinary about Stafford Castle is its sheer size. These are the ditches and mounds of the inner bailey, the inner line of defences which surrounded the castle itself. The outer bailey ditches lie 300 yards that way towards Stafford Town behind those trees. So it's a really massive series of earthworks. And originally, as you made your way up towards the keep, you had to cross still one more defence line, a huge ditch which lay right below the mound itself. The whole thing covers about 20 acres. That's half the size of the medieval borough of Stafford. And one of the mysteries about it is why it was so big. But until 10 years ago, no archaeologist had been anywhere near the place. By the early 1960s, Stafford Castle was a Victorian ruin that had become a civic problem. The town couldn't afford to restore the 19th century buildings. Unloved, the castle was vandalised. Then a child died in an accident. Demolition seemed the only solution. Phil Barker a Midlander with a high reputation for field archaeology was called in to advise Stafford on whether there was anything at all of value on the castle site. Stafford wanted to be sure they weren't about to destroy something worth keeping. Barker realised that the whole site, the woods, the surrounding fields, as well as the castle mound, was an archaeologist's dream. Almost all the stonework you can see there is early 19th century. It's one of the first neo-Gothic houses built in this country, but it's built almost exactly on the ground plan of a 14th century castle, which itself stands on the Norman Mott. There's been quite a lot of vandalism. A lot of very large stones have been thrown down. There's much more brickwork lying about. It's continuous. First thing that's got to be done is to make this castle safe. And then we can excavate inside and get details perhaps of the medieval castle. And beyond that, there are enormous possibilities. These earthworks stretch right down to the road. They're full of buildings. You fall over them in the wood. It's going to take a lot of time, a lot of money, but it could be a project unlike any other now going on in Britain. The immediate task was to prevent further damage. But to justify his claims for the castle, Barker needed to find something people could actually see. This is the stonework of the Victorian ruin. However, as the builders cleared the southwest tower, the techniques of a different and older generation of stonemasons came into view. Uh, the colour of the sandstone is different, the sizes of the blocks are different, the tooling is very rough, and it's held together with a buff mortar full of stones which is very like what we believe is the medieval mortar in the foundations of the castle elsewhere. So it's possible that we have part of the 14th century castle embedded in the 19th century rebuilding, but we shan't be sure until we've emptied this tower out and studied it very carefully indeed. By early summer the southwest tower had been emptied. 
evidence of medieval doorways and fireplaces became clear. It was what was needed to convince Stafford that restoration was a better bargain for the town than demolition. Then the castle has collapsed. It's been helped on its way by a lot of the less thoughtful people of Stafford. In fact, when I first saw it, it was <coughs> in a dreadful state with barbed wire around it, graffiti all over it, uh, including the record of some of the stones that had been stolen by Pop. You can still see that up there, uh, whoever Pop was. He sold 20 tons. And, um, In the audience, and, uh, the son and heir of the Earl of Stafford. On the platform, his father, owner of the woodland then surrounding the castle, and the leader of the council, Walter Dean, on whose support any long-term project would depend. There are not, very, there are not so many uh, large and important castles in the Midlands. And there are very few which have survived mutilation uh, by development or, or deep ploughing or something else. In other words, very few castles in the Midlands, in fact, not an awful lot in the whole country, are available for the sort of long and detailed uh, investigation which your castle uh, affords. Now, this is what I suggest to you if you accept that there is long-term potential for this site, that the work as it progresses could be displayed to the public in all sorts of imaginative ways. This would be the public side of your site. Already the council has put aside, um, I think it's 60,000 pounds for the examination of this site. Now obviously there's no commitment to do anything beyond that. But my guess would be that the future will depend a great deal on what if anything, is discovered in that four, five, six years, however long it takes. So, with the cautious support of the town, archaeology got the go-ahead. Altogether, though much was hidden by woodland ten years ago, there were 20 acres to dig. Where do you start? Phil Barker chose three sites. The keep at the top of the hill, the bailey, the courtyard where many of the service industries would have been, and 300 yards away, the site of what Barker hoped might be a castle village, though to the untrained eye, it was then, as now, just a field with humps and hollows. A young Welsh archaeologist, Charles Hill, was brought in. Working to Barker, he was to be responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the Stafford project. And over the past 10 years, Regular filming has produced a fascinating record of how modern archaeologists approach a dig. What has been found during that dig is in turn allowing us to understand far better the life of a great castle over 900 years. Let's begin with the keep. Soon after the Norman conquest of England, and perhaps it was William the Conqueror himself in 1070, the Normans threw up this huge artificial mound on top of the natural hill to form a base for a timber castle. For the moment, we must forget the stone towers and turrets that we see today. They're part of the last castle to be built on the mound, the early 19th century fake medieval folly. But the archaeologist's first task was to discover how many castles had existed on the site in between the Normans and the Victorians, and their search began in the county library. I'm very surprised how little there is surviving about the origins of the castle. We know there was a castle in Stafford in 1070, uh, which seems to have been destroyed by 1086. But the first real reference to our castle on the hill comes in 1102, when the site was fortified on behalf of Henry I. But there's very little evidence for the castle in the 12th and the 13th centuries, until 1348, when the building agreement between Ralph I, Earl of Stafford, and a master mason actually survives. The documents revealed that the 19th century castle had been built to much the same plan as Earl Ralph's keep, the one mentioned in that building agreement.
During the first few months, volunteer diggers soon established that many more features of the Victorian castle dated from the Middle Ages than anyone had previously imagined. The whole 19th century keep had been built around the shell of Earl Ralph's building of 1348. But a drawing of 1521 suggested there was a fifth tower on the west side of the keep. Did any trace survive? Sure enough, its foundations emerged during that first summer's dig. 1.495. But the documents were infuriatingly silent about the castle's history before 1348. Yes, about when, for instance, the very first buildings in stone might have been constructed. Mm. And what you're suggesting is that all that has been added on to a rectangular building here. Yeah. This is where an archaeologist's hunch comes into play. Well, now you could, mm. you could look for this here. There would be a straight joint where this is butted up against that and that. There. The first hint of that missing stone building at the northwest end of the keep. What occurs to me is that this is then uh, an earlier stone castle which lies between the timber castle, which we suppose was mm. built on the mot, yes. and this stone castle, which we know about. Mm. It would fill up the uh, hiatus we have in our building history yeah. up here. It took much longer to find hard evidence when a dig at the base of the northwest tower revealed for the first time earlier stone foundations. Cameron Moffat. We have three phases of construction here. The most recent being the 19th century masonry. Uh, and below that, we have the 14th century masonry, which is interesting in that it has a set of mason's marks running around it, which we've seen in other places in the building on also 14th century masonry. But the most interesting thing here is this early set of foundations, which we can see have been open to the elements for some time, for a period of about 20 years. People have been walking on them. And then this later 14th century building was, was put on top of it. And you can see also that this is different to the, to the later tower. If you follow the alignment around, you can see that it's, it diverges very much from the 14th century building. So that what we have here is an earlier building, possibly of the 12th or 13th century, which existed before the 14th century towers. Every year the finds were recorded and logged, often by local schoolchildren learning new skills, for instance how to identify and date the pottery of different periods. Well, you can tell the difference between Victorian and medieval. Um, the Victorian is usually quite heavily glazed and is much harder and the medieval is softer, and it makes a different sound when you hit it as well. It's a much softer sort of pottery altogether. Uh, well, this year we're getting down some very interesting layers within the uh, keep. Uh, until now we've been in the late post-medieval period, but now we're getting down to what we think is the region of 1643. Why do I say that? Well, here we have some pottery, almost certainly of 17th century date. In 1643, the uh, the royalist garrison was attacked by the parliamentary forces from Stafford. And over here, we have some very heavy lead musket shot, which comes from an area of burning by a stair passage within the keep. These reminders of the Civil War came from a newly discovered flight of steps near the centre of the keep. But finding 17th century musket shot doesn't necessarily mean you've got proof of when a building was put up, only when it was in use. The question is, what date is it, first of all? And if you've got musket balls on it, then it must have been open in the 17th century. And if you look also, it's been repaired and rebuilt. You haven't got any door jams, and it... But was there another floor of the keep waiting to be uncovered? Finding the extent of the rooms at this level would be crucial to complete the building plan of Earl Ralph's 1348 castle. Coming into the corner of a room yep. which yes. has been so uh, changed and altered that it's very difficult yes. to see where its floor was. I think we've got three sides of a room. The fourth side is over here. And of course we've got to remove that 19th century rubble still in order to find out. Right. It took another year to complete the sequence. The girls that would be in the, the wine cellar, the, the first floor, the, the kitchens and the, the buttery, uh, would be at the level of the fireplace that you see behind. The great hall 
uh, and the banquet hall above us have long since disappeared. They have now uh, gone. We have also gone through uh, some of the earlier levels of the timber, the Norman castle. Uh, in fact,